it's getting scary to the establishment that th- this the real story about January 6th might break through. And here's the Democratic leader in the Senate, Chuck Schumer. This is the, one of the most bizarre things I think I've ever seen in my life. And I never thought I'd see it, but here it is. Last night, millions of Americans tuned in to one of the most shameful hours we have ever seen on cable television. Fox News host Tucker Carlson ran a lengthy segment last night arguing the January 6th Capitol attack was not a violent insurrection. I don't think I've ever seen a primetime cable news anchor manipulate his viewers (laughs) the way Mr. Carlson did last night. I don't think I've ever seen an anchor treat the American people and American democracy with such disdain. So uh, that's a very one of, the, one of the three most powerful politicians or four in the country. And there he is chastising a, a, a newsman for exposing secrets of the government. And now, normally if Trump did that, they would call him a, a dictator and, a, and an authoritarian. And everybody would clutch their pearls over Jim Acosta. But the fact that he's doing it about... Uh, Tucker Carlson or Julian Assange or anybody else he thinks is a political enemy. Nobody give that's okay. That's okay. But if but if when Trump was doing it, it was the worst thing. It was the worst thing in the world. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe there's gambling going on in here. And and so uh so it gets worse. Here here we go. He's going to come back tonight with another segment. Fox News should tell him not to. Fox News, <laughs> Rupert Murdoch. Tell Carlson not to run a second segment (laughs) of lies. I urge Fox News to order Carlson to cease propagating the big lie on his network and to level with their viewers about the truth, the truth behind the efforts to mislead the public. So the politician is going to give us the truth and the newsman showing raw footage. That's the guy who's lying. I hope he gets really upset with another speech tomorrow. <laughs> like, so he's telling he's so he's demanding censorship of a of a journalist, not just any journalist, the number one news show on television. He's demanding that the oligarch who owns it censor that guy. Can you imagine if Trump did that? If Trump demanded the number one news, if he went and said Rachel Maddow, MSNBC, take her down, or take take down Anderson Cooper. Can you imagine if Trump did that? They were, everybody would go nuts, <laughs> but he does that, that. They don't even think about it. They don't even think twice about it. And well, that's what the Dominion lawsuit's all about. It's about getting Rupert Murdoch to let go of Fox and specifically get rid of Tucker because he goes off script on things like January 6th or Ukraine specifically. And, you know, this lawsuit could actually achieve that. It could cost Rupert Murdoch and the Murdoch family so much. They would have to let this go. You can, and so I, I think that's why Schumer is directing it there. Um, and he, here, here's the White House uh, press secretary being asked about this, Tucker Carlson. When, as it relates to the Tucker Carlson question, we agree with uh, Fox Nation's own attorneys and executives who have repeatedly stressed in multiple courts of law that Tucker, Tucker Carlson is not credible when it comes to this issue. So they won't they won't address anything that he's actually saying. They just do this broad stroke of he's not credible as if they are right. As if press secretaries and politicians are somehow credible. And um, I forgot who gave me that guy. I got that video from I should have credited. I can't remember. Is the raw footage credible that. (laughs) Right. I know. Right. So here's what Tucker Carlson. Now, he makes a really interesting point here about all what Chuck Schumer saying. And watch this. Told you that last night. Those videos touch a nerve because they're a threat to the lies that Chuck Schumer has been telling for the last 26 months and not just Chuck Schumer. We should also tell you that Chuck Schumer, the Senate majority leader, was joined in this outrage by the Senate minority leader. And that would be a Republican, Mitch McConnell. And they were joined by a cascade of other Republicans. Tom Tillis from North Carolina, Mitt Romney from Utah all sharing the same outrage. And from this, we learn two things. One, you're getting close to what they really care about. And you have to ask yourself, why? Why is it so important 
that they would degrade themselves by telling such obvious lies and calling for censorship. Why? What are they trying to protect? That might be worth exploring, and we plan to. And the second thing that we learned from this is that they're on the same side. The Senate Majority Leader joins the Senate Minority Leader. Tom Tillis, Mitt Romney. (laughs) They're all on the same side. So it's actually not about left and right. It's not about Republican and Democrat. That's right. Here you have people with shared interests. The open borders people. The people people like Mitch McConnell who are living in splendor on Chinese money. The people who underneath it all have everything in common are all aligned against everyone else. And that would include almost all news organizations in this country as well. And so if you're watching this, it might be kind of interesting to keep a list. Because one thing we learned today is that they're all in agreement with each other. They kind of outed themselves. They sort of showed their membership cards and whatever club this is to the public. So keep a list. If you want to know who's actually aligned, despite the illusion of partisanship, we found out today. Very well said. I think it's very powerful. And again, this is the number one news show in America. So he's got a big audience that's listening to this. And a lot of them are Democrats. And so it it just goes to show you when Tucker Carlson becomes the voice of truth against the establishment, it is long overdue for a revolution in America. We are living in the most corrupted country, I think, in all of uh, the Western world. Our government is completely controlled in, uh, by uh, a handful of billionaires and moneyed interests. That, and that's it. A couple of corporations owned by a handful of billionaires. And they all agree. He said he, he said the, the Republicans, Democrats, they agree. And almost all the news media agrees. And they're all against the common man. And they're all against truth. And they're all for a narrative to try to marginalize the voice of Americans. And Max, now you interviewed someone last year on your show. Do you remember it was on Rumble? And he spoke about how they did this in other countries, that there that there was there were, right, right around the time of January 6th, that there was uh, in your, I think it was maybe Germany, that something similar had happened. Can you speak to that? Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, uh, it was on my show on Rockfin. Uh, I, w- I think it was, I was talking to CJ Hopkins. And CJ explained how, from his point of view, at the first major rally against the lockdown in Berlin, some Nazis spontaneously appeared with masks on and began committing acts of violence and attempting to storm federal buildings. And this became the pretext for uh, criminalizing anti-lockdown protesters, painting them all as Nazis. And it all just seemed so convenient. Um, And that's you know, fr- from that point on, Germany then went on to propose, uh, for example, locking down exclusively unvac- unvaccinated people indefinitely. Uh, they expanded their criminal code. And now, you know, you see the German police out at anti-war protests actually uh, arresting or harassing people because they're displaying the letter Z, which is the letter that's like the call sign of the Russian military operation in Ukraine, or wearing the St. George's Cross or or um, waving the uh, USSR flag. I actually just, uh, I have an interview going up tonight at the Gray Zone with Heinrich Bucher, who is one of the leading anti-war activists in Berlin. He's facing 40 days in prison for simply denouncing German military aid to Ukraine. So there is a constant escalation in these pseudo-democratic regimes across the West of criminalization of dissidents because the only thing they have to rule us with is fear. They no longer have the consent of the masses. So that's what I'm talking about. And I think that that's the thing that scares them the most, which is why when I interviewed a Boogaloo boy on the show and found out that we share a lot of common ground, like he was pro-Black Lives Matter, pro-LGBTQ, anti-war, anti-cop, and anti-Trump, and that he was being uh, trampled under the same economic forces that everybody was during COVID and that his pain wasn't caused by his neighbor. His pain was called by the, uh, the establishment. And when I ca- brought that message to my show that I never, that was the biggest waylay I've ever gotten from social media. And, uh, 
that's what they can't have. You'd have thought you were Dennis Rodman going to see Kim Jong Un. You would have thought. Anger. You would have thought. <laughs> and it was like, no, I just talked to another American who, by the way, used to vote Democrat twenty five years ago. That's the thing they couldn't understand. Those guys used to vote Democrat, and that's what they don't want to talk about. And that's what Chuck Schumer admitted, that we don't care if we lose blue-collar voters, we're going to pick up, for every blue-collar voter we lose, we're going to pick up two white-collar voters in the suburbs. So they've become the Republican Party, and they, they admit it. And that's an admittance, that they're not no longer the party of workers, that they're the party of the upper class and the professional managerial class. They're not connected to workers. The left is the left move Democrats or whatever, they're not connected to workers. And so anyway... Uh, that's very, that's the number again. I can't st st state it enough. I know you think Tucker Carlson is like some kook who nobody listens to. He's the number one news show in America and has more Democrats in the demo watching him than watch MSNBC. So this message is getting through and that's why they're over. That's why they're reacting. They're not overreacting. They're reacting. They should be scared because now people are going to know they've been lying. If you want to see my stand-up special, become a member at jimmydark.com. It's only $10, and come see our live stand-up comedy in Los Angeles, Palm Springs, Milwaukee, St. Paul, Honolulu, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Coho's, New York, Hartford, and more.